now that our vise is fully assembled and done and everything works on it, we're going to go ahead and get to the next step, which is kind of presenting it and um, testing it and things like that. So we're going to do some structural testing on it. Uh, we're going to make some what's called working drawings to kind of present it. Uh, but before we get to that, we are going to do probably what my one of my favorite things in Inventor is, which is animating it and looking, making it look kind of cool. So to get started first, we got to um, edit one quick thing on our vice. Right now, we have a constraint to keep this from moving back and forth. Um, if we expand our jaw by clicking on the jaw in the browser, we find this mate constraint of the plus or minus. Remember we did that earlier. Uh, we put in the limits here so that it could only go a certain distance. Well, we are going to go ahead and delete that. So right click, click delete, and now it can go wherever it wants. We're then going to put a new constraint from the back of our jaw to the front or the back of our vise. So just click OK. And now it can't move it at all. And that's perfectly fine. We're also going to need a distance here. So I'm going to click M on my keyboard. And I just want to measure this distance from here to all the way to back here. I'm going to, or sorry, that's wrong. Um, from here to here, so 3.1 inches. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. We're going to need that later on. So that's the distance that our jaw is going to have to move so it looks like it closes. All right, so let's get into the, assemb or the animation environment. We're going to go up to our, our ribbon and go up to our tabs at the top and click on environments. We have a couple different things here. We're going to go into Inventor Studio. So Inventor Studio allows us to make cameras, it allows us to animate things, um, and it just allows us to do a lot of really cool stuff in Inventor. So we're going to start off by just opening some uh, tools we're going to need. We're going to need the anim animation timeline here. And when you get this error, just click OK. And that pops up this timeline right here. I'm going to make this a little bit more advanced for me to see. So I'm going to go over to this corner and click Expand Action Editor. And nothing's there right now, uh, but we're, we're going to add some stuff there pretty soon and see how useful it is. So Inventor animation works by you essentially specify one camera, and then you, you specify amount of time in a second camera, and Inventor will move from one camera to the other in that amount of time. So we're going to make an animation that pans over our entire vise. And it's going to come down and see it from some different angles. And this is going to close all at the same time. So we're going to specify our very first camera. I'm going to essentially get into that view. So I want my first camera to be looking essentially how I am now. So I'm going to go up to here where it says Scene. And I'm going to click on Camera. And this allows me to create my own camera. I'm going to click on this surface here. And now it's asking me for me asking for me to position my camera. So I can move my mouse back and forth. And you can see that box is essentially the size of my camera. I'm going to go in pretty close, right about there. So it just barely sees the camera. So the camera is created. So I'm going to click OK. And I want to see what it looks like from that camera. So over here where it says current view, I'm going to just click on camera one. All right, so that's our beginning of our camera. Now I want my next camera to be at the very end of it. And I want it to take four seconds. So here where it says time, I'm going to type in four. Just click off of it. And then I'm going to move over. You can pan without zooming in and out by pushing down on your middle mouse button and clicking and dragging. So I want this to be where my camera stops before it goes to something else. So I'm just going to go down here where it says camera one and click add camera action here. And that creates a camera there. So if I were to rewind, so go back here and click go to start, you'll see over four seconds I will pan over my vice. So click play animation. And there we go. It just pans over it. All right. And it keeps going even though there's nothing there. Our next time, let's have it be, say, nine seconds. I'm going to have it come out to just my home view, more or less. So I have that view created. I'm just going to click 
add camera action. So add another time of, let's say, 13 seconds. And I'm going to go sideways for my jaw, or for my uh, vice, and click Add Camera. And then we're going to look at it from the very front, or from the front kind of area, just like that. Oh, and I forgot to type in a time, so let's do, what is that? Let's do that over six seconds, so that's 19. Um, and 19 seconds, I have to recreate that view because I forgot to type in my time first. There we go, and add a camera. Now, between that 13 seconds and 19 seconds, I want my jaw to close. So I'm going to go up here to constraints, and the very first thing I have to do is select a constraint. So let's expand my jaw in my browser, and my make constraint down here was that last constraint we placed. I'm going to double click on it and make sure it says animate constraints mate 22. My start distance is going to be zero inches. That's right against it. My end will be that number we measured earlier, or 3.1 uh, inches. Then my duration, my time, I'm going to switch to specify. And I will start at 13 seconds and end at 19 seconds for a duration of six seconds. So click OK. And that will add that there. So let's see what we have so far. I'm going to go back to my start and click play. And there we go. It moves smoothly there with it. And I'm left in that view. So I have one more view. So I'm going to change my time to be, or we got 19 seconds. So let's do 25 seconds now. And I'm going to go and look at it from the back then. And click Create Camera. And then I want to animate that jaw, have it open back up again. So I'm going to go back to constraints, select mate 22 again. Start at 3.1 inches, end at 0 inches. And my duration is 19 seconds to 25 seconds. That's perfect. So click OK. And it opens back up. Now if we watch it one last time, That was pretty cool. All right. So I went back to start animation. This is exactly what we want. So I now want to record this animation and turn it into an actual video file. Now, you, before you do this, I want you to make your own animation. Make it a little bit creative. Do something on your own to just make it look cool. Make it your own. But now that we're done that, we're going to go over here and click Record Animation. And we get this message that comes up. And we can leave all this as is. Um, well, except for go to output our time range. Our end was at, what, 25 seconds. Um, and then we leave everything else on. Don't change any of these things right now. Uh, it'll, these computers, our computers, can't really handle that much rendering. Um, so if you were to go and change some of these things, it might not work. Then I just click Render and choose where to save it. And we can leave all this as is. Click OK. And now it's going to go through and it's going to render every single frame. So 376 frames. And it does each one in, in about a second. Um, you can see I have remaining 5 minutes and 33 seconds. And it keeps adding time. So we're not going to actually sit here and wait for this to go through. Um, but you go ahead and do this, and then once it's done, you just click Save Rendering, and you should have your video file in your H drive for you to look at.
So I'm going to go ahead and cancel the render because um, I don't want to wait for five minutes or so. Um, but you can go ahead and, and do that rendering. Once you're all done, just make sure to click Save. And that's our video.